going on, everybody? I'm Jabby Kawai, joined by Char Kirk. What's up? Continuing forward with Succession, Season 2, Episode 4, Quattro. Like the Schick Raves. Damn it. <laughs> Did you mean to say Razor? Schick Razor. It sounded like shh. Another sh word. I, I, did, I don't know how far along we are on the video. I wasn't about to swear just yet. But mm. you know that word I like to say a lot. This episode <laughs> is called Safe Room. If you're watching on YouTube, you're seeing a cut down version of our reaction because we can only show a limited amount of picture in picture. But if you want to watch the whole thing with us, no cuts, no interruptions, head over to our Patreon page. Patreon.com slash Jabby or become a member of this channel. You'll get access to the full uncut reaction. So you can open up each episode in an adjacent window to our reaction. We give you a 3 to 1 countdown sync. It's like you're watching with two of your favorite cine pals from the internet. Yeah. Now, if you're watching on Patreon, our memberships already. Thanks so much for supporting us here. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, please. Bell icon, all notifications, vote this up. Let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. Here we go. Hey, Rhea. Hey, it's Kendall Roy again. Frank gave me the impression it was cool to make contact. Just hoping we can make this happen today. Oh, is that from me? Would just me? be good to connect. Okay, thanks. Is Rhea from that other family? They're trying to buy out? <laughs> This could get ugly. Oh. Can you imagine if someone actually cleaned up here, Tom, with a cleansing zeal? Uh huh. Like Mary Poppins with a heart on? No, like me. Or you. Oh. <laughs> She's coming in. She's like, I'm gonna change some things. I don't think that's gonna happen though. Daddy's not gonna allow it. That was it. Wish me luck. All right. But don't come back, Sangoons. They may sacrifice me to their gods. Welcome to management yeah. training. Oh. Oh. oh, he's doing it. Yeah. I was just owing the donuts. <laughs> Not the donuts, the croissants. Owing the donuts? Yeah, no, the croissants. Welcome, everyone. I see. Congratulations to all of you for being Clearly selected he to be here. Impressed. This is very exciting. You all excited? Yeah. All right. Companies <laughs> in the world. <laughs> His little face. <laughs> I didn't even say anything. Oh. <laughs> Why was his face in there at all? Because he's, you know, he's the co CEO. Oh, but they're like, you don't need to say anything, Roman. You're too unpredictable. What happened with the video? What do you mean? It's me and some satellites for like three seconds. Sure thing. I get it. So, uh, how is it going? Oh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I'm going to grow up and become a real little boy and learn the price of an egg and do phone sex with my girlfriend like a normo. You'll be fine. <laughs> Just be brave, okay? He's doing the right thing, I think. Yeah. So, where should I base myself? In there? Not there. That's Kendall. We'll find you somewhere. Something nearby. In the basement. Can you find Shiv somewhere? I'm going to prep with Ken. 20 minutes. You good? Yeah. Kendall's really feeling like his dad's right-hand man at the minute. Yeah, I mean, he's doing medicine delivery. I know. That's a big deal. You're a smart cookie, yeah. Mm-hmm. We should talk. Greg, uh -oh. when you're done flirting, can you latte me, please? <laughs> Time for the real meeting. <laughs> okay, <Jerk>. Tom. <laughs> hey, hey, who's the hot so hard. <laughs> I'm not here. I'm just observing. Uh-oh, Tom. Keep cool. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she just sent him a thumbs up emoji. Keep going. She know she's coming, so, right? I mean, why lie to the old lady unless uh, you're down to. Uh oh. Oh no. no the jealousy. We're the group on this, okay? The family trusts her. You get her on board. That's huge. She can be our Coriolanus. He switched sides. <laughs> We have been asked to comment because um, apparently Mark, records show that he got married at the Eagle's Nest, Hitler's retreat in Bavaria, a chapel below. Oh, shit. His agent assures me that it was a coincidence they were on vacation in the area. Yeah, well, f***ing big coincidence. Uh oh, Greg. <laughs> so Marcia called. Yeah, she wanted me to talk to the widow. Oh. They're involving you in their disgusting little stratagems. Right. It means they like you. Yeah. What? That, that they, you know, that's pretty big to be asked to do something, maybe. I mean, look at Greg. He got asked to pick up papers. Now he's, like, in. So, uh, Herr Ravenhead, do you have anything for me? How did I meet? I heard he named his dog after Hitler's dog, maybe? Blondie? Oh, dude. If it's true, he's gone. I mean, Nazis, terrible, right? Yeah. Nazis? So, Kendall. And Carolina. 
So public facing, but Colin too. And dad's in a secret meeting, and I'm in here with a coloring book. <laughs> Maybe you should talk to your dad. Oh, come on, it's me. What's happening? It's Kendall. What, is he huffing Sharpies again? Shoplifting. Is stealing? Yeah. Stealing what? Oh, that's right. Yeah, he, yeah, stole, he, stole, he stole the battery. Stole, yeah. He threw it in the trash. trash. Ken, your thing, she's en route. Good. What's that? It's not a thing. It's fine, Ken. Do your secret shit. You mm. seem to be mistaking me for someone you're in competition with. Okay, wait. Hold the lady coming right now. Is that a therapist? I wonder if that might be Rhea. Okay, gotcha. Uh oh. I mean, that's a very fancy car. Thanks, Rhea Jarrell. Then you must be Oedipus Roy. Oh. Uh, I'm teasing. Right. Are we this way? Yeah, over here. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> His reaction was exactly yours. He didn't know what to do with I it. I know, I was like, huh? It's like, how do I navigate this awkward part of this? Please, have a seat. Uh, can I get you something to drink? Oh, just some water, thanks. Quite a view. Sometimes I can't tell if an insert is just an insert or if it has more meaning. Yeah. Like with the handshake. I have a message. On behalf of the Pierce family and the media organization, it is privately owned for 150 years. The message would be a typically balanced, nuanced, and objective f off. Very nuanced. I knew that was coming. What do they want? The Pierces mm -hmm. in general? Who knows? I want Pierce. We really only eat Pulitzer over at Pierce. Ooh. I'll, uh... Stay for five and skulk out the way I skulk in. Dang. She had all the power in that. Yeah. And then uh, work it up into a pitch and we're gonna present to the group, okay? What is this, school? We're pitching now? What if we f it? What if I can't think of anything? I don't have anything prepared. Do you know about this? This is a rank and yank. It's up or out. This is a death march through a minefield. Okay, well, come on. He's so negative. The everyday people like. Um, do you everyday, how the f I know what everyday people like. I like booking out a suite at the Chateau and snorting purified sertraline off women that don't know their p***s yet. <laughs> what do you like? Me? Yeah. Okay, uh, I enjoy spending time with my nephews, Cooper and Clark. I hike. I have several high-end racing drones. Oh my god, stop. No offense. How about terror? Like, actual terror. Like a VR experience, but like... Okay. Okay. Like, we put you in one of those landing crafts, and you're about to hit the beach. Mm -hmm. Normally. I think the idea is a bit extreme, but he's on the right path. Yeah. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. And, oh yes, the Hitler dog thing. Okay, the dog thing is bullshit. Great, great, I thought so. Different spelling. Uh, how do you even know the right spelling? It's <laughs> fine. Have you ever read Mein Kampf? Um, yeah, a couple times, I guess. Just a couple twice? Times? Are there oh, Easter no. eggs in there? You didn't get the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies, there seems to be a fire alarm sounding. We'll find out the cause of that. Wow, she looks like a Fox News reporter. Oh my gosh. What's happening? We'll get on that, sir. We just want to get you safe. Where's Kendall? Is he safe? We'll find him. That's Open the door, please. He's asking about Kendall, but not Shiv. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh. That's a nice little panic room. With some Pringles. <laughs> and some pretzels. Where's Tom? So what are you hearing? Is it all over? Seems to have calmed down, but honestly, I can't get read, sir. Okay. Yeah, they're not, they're not in the fancy panic room. <laughs> hey, Shiv. Tom, where are you? I'm with Dad. There was what? a gunshot, but nobody where? was found yet. I, I'm in the f***ing panic room. There's two panic rooms? I think I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong panic room. There's the, the normie panic room. <laughs> and is that bulletproof? Are these windows bulletproof? A person can fit through there. A person can definitely fit through that window. A small person, an attack child. <laughs> an attack child. <laughs> Rhea Jarrell, hi. Siobhan, how are you? Uh, yeah, this is good as it can be. What? Is she gonna be the reason why the deal goes through? I heard the alarm and was told to evacuate immediately. We were rushed down 14 flights of stairs. Oh, it's just coincidental. I heard one Hello. staffer who was obviously very distressed saying she'd heard a single gunshot and someone shouting, shooter. Oh my God. 
so much drama. I'm so sorry for your loss, Maria. You know, I never met Mo, but I heard that he was just a great guy. Wait, so why does everyone call him His Mo? real name is Lester. Yeah. I guess I haven't thought about it for a while, but it was kind of a joke. Like what? Like the Three Stooges? Mo Lester. <gasps> oh. Oh. Oh, that's a terrible joke. Dad wouldn't let us in the pool with him. But you know, the guys oh of that God. generation, it was a different time. Okay, just, just a little bit of light. The end of this I feel a pack attack coming on. That's information she could have used prior to that greet. <laughs> I know. Oh, there's been an incident at ATM. My dad okay? It's been suggested it could be a concerted attack against the family. Do you want us to take you to a more secure location? Yeah, of course I want that. Get me the f*** out of here. I'm a tad surprised that Roman went. I half expected Roman to chill there. Do you think, uh, do you think right now might be a good time for a little chat? Yeah. What, Greg? Yeah, about what? I'm in the shadow of a giant here, a.k.a. you. Oh, good start. If I go work with somebody else for a little bit. Sorry. Are you, are you attempting to break up with me? Greg? It's just... Is he half joking? <laughs> I just don't love it. Like I, I just don't really love it, and I want to go explore, and then I and I can come back. You know, he's not coming it, back. It could be like leaves. like a business open relationship. <laughs> <laughs> a degree of security for him. Yeah. Feeling, Greg, that you're making me half. You know, can you stop crunching? Sure. <laughs> Okay, Tom. Hey, hey, Tom, Tom. We're good. Cause it doesn't feel f***ing good, Greg! Let's just go. Oh. Hey! I will not let you do this to me! I will not let go of what is mine! What, 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 what am I doing? Oh, oh my gosh. Stop. 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 Security! Oh, oh, guys, no, you back off! You back off! This is an executive level business. <laughs> God. Stop, Tom! We're friends! You're one of my best friends! <laughs> That's awful! He's taking out his frustrations on poor Greg! <laughs> Stop! That's so childish. Uh, sorry, everyone. We're just gonna need to keep you all here another 20 while they sweep the third. Damn. How come you're in? You work here now? Uh... No, I just, uh, my family owns the joint. I don't know if you hear that. Everybody's lying. Oh, wow. I was hoping something was going to come of that. We did have one thing to mention that could uh, address that issue. Uh-huh. $21 billion. Okay. I'm a mere conduit. Well, maybe you should conduit that. You know, I suppose the thing is, it's an emotional matter for the Pierces. Money is not irrelevant, but, but how can I put it? Relevant. Nevertheless. 21.5. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do you have the authority? Is that enough? It's not up to me. I mean, so you're just bidding against yourself there? Yeah. Stop, Kendall. 22. But I f***ing love news and news people. I will invest. Well, it would take a hell of a lot of investment from where things are. 22 billion. Stop, Kendall. Can he say that, Dad? I mean, that's not even the issue, right? Um, well. Oh. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Editorial independence. I don't think there's anything to even say without that. Well, okay, there are models, right, for an independent board. And forgetting the numbers, there are structures designed to ensure that current philosophical approach is protected. Okay, thank you. And now, um... <laughs> <laughs> Old Kendall's back. <laughs> I think it's telling that your most positive spin still sounds a bit. <laughs> hey, do you trust me? No. No. That's not really the issue, Dad. I mean, you're not going to be around forever, so there need to be structures in place that are. Gonna... Siobhan, please. Oh, hey. If I say I won't pierce over, I'll keep the brand. They're editors, they're people. Do you trust me? And will you tell them to trust me? Uh-huh. Because 
When I say something will happen, that thing will happen. Am I right, kids? Right. Um, right. So, will you tell them? 24. Wow. And they can trust me. That's a productive meeting. <laughs> well, Kendall's instincts were right, apparently. So is this the safe room? Yes. And apparently it's impregnable. Well, um, they announced the winning pitch. Oh, they did. Yeah. Uh-huh. You won. Do you happen to know who they were going to give it to before they gave it to the name? I don't think it was a name. Well, that's very touching, but I'm basically f***ing Elvis around here. So you want to go check? Yeah. Yeah, let's f***ing check. They walked me through that scene a little bit. I thought his idea was legitimately good, and it just came so easy to him. He's like, of course. Like, they're all knuckleheads in there. Of course I won. Right. But for him, it was irritating that they found out who he was. I mean, what if the shit comes out and you're on record for praising the shit out of him? Why can't I be the one caught in a lockdown with a maniac? Con? <laughs> I, I spoke to Lester a lot toward the end. He always spoke so fondly of you. Oh, I see you a mile away, sister. Yeah. What, you want to dig through my treasure chest for some precious memory gems? No, I don't want to make anyone do anything. Connor Roy was interested in politics at a very young age. This isn't an interview. We're just two people chatting at a funeral. Oh, it's not safe. Not safe. You, you are totally it's sus, lady. It's a nice lady. church, don't you think? I'll tell you what a nice no church way. it is. Connor Roy was interested in politics from a very young age. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That was slick. Connor Roy was interested in politics from a very young age. I look forward to hearing what you have to say about Lester. Get out of there now. Don't yeah. look back. It'll be fine. You had, you had some food poisoning. Okay, folks. Just get out of there. Real quick. Oh, we're just going to gonna pretend before. this didn't happen. God, it's so abusive. The boys will be boys to Char Kirk. No, it's not okay. <laughs> boys will be boys. It's not mm. okay. Someone's trying to break up with you. You don't throw shit at them. They're not in a relationship. I have some leverage, but I'm reluctant to use it. Oh. You know, in case it sours things for us. What leverage, Greg? Oh, shit. Yeah, I hope you kept that in a safe place. When you had me destroy those documents at Cruz's? No. <laughs> well, I, I kept it. I don't want to bring anything up to you in a way that feels like horrible. It's just, you know, context. Very well. I accept your blackmail. No, I'm not blackmailing. But you are, though, no. you piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> One more money, nice new office. You're moving up. You can throw away the training bra. Seat at the big table. You like that? You f it. Look at you. <laughs> Where are they, those papers? I'll never tell. <laughs> You're a slime ball. No. <laughs> I love that he enjoys how sleazy all of this is. This is how so funny. All of us will die one day. In this case, it is Lester who has done so. It's <laughs> like those. Now he is dead. Lester's wife is Maria. They were married for 15 years. Now she is sad. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> also, there's a green list saber <laughs> in the parking lot. <laughs> Her face. Oh, she was really hoping for something as well. Something juicy. Yeah. Nice one. As the head of an organization myself, I can only imagine how you must be feeling. It's a dark day. Thanks for your hospitality. Hope to see you soon. Well, if not, we'll always have the panic room. Yeah. <laughs> If you're really serious about approaching the family, do yourself a favor. A peace offering would be nice. That Walmart Mussolini who puts Nan Pierce off her old-fashioned raven head, yes? Hmm. Bye-bye, raven head. Uh oh. The, the Nazi guy. Yeah, yeah. Good work. <laughs> <laughs> she made she no contribution, did she? She did work too. She she opened the conversation up again that would not have happened if it wasn't for her. Yeah. She didn't actually like. I killed it, Tabs. 
ice. She didn't actually one. offer anything that made the conversation more productive, but she initiated it. Yeah. And that was important. Roman, what is it now? You know, I'm still pissed off they didn't give me any good footage. Seriously? They treated me like I'm a piece of shit. You are a piece of shit. You're acting like an overexcited little boy. You know, technically, I'm your f***ing boss. Go to bed, Roman. Go to bed and masturbate all your ideas out. And let's see how excited you feel tomorrow. Well, maybe. Maybe I will. I'm fine. Oh, no. Please don't. That's so gross. I told you. He enjoys this dynamic with her. You disgusting little pig. You're pathetic. Oh, my God. That's what he likes. I told you. I <laughs> called it. <laughs> I knew there was some, like, weird... King pseudo Oedipus Rex kind of thing there. Mm, you called it. Takes one to know one. Just kidding. Hey, old ladies. <laughs> oh man, they got some experience. <laughs> so here's a question: What the fuck is going on between you and Dad? Do you have a deal with him? Did he make you an offer in the Hamptons? You know what? What? What is this? What's going on here? I'm not a fucking dummy. There is an atmosphere. Yeah. I wouldn't trust her. You'd need to ask him. You can't tell me? You can't tell me what's going on? I would just ask that you take care of me. If dad didn't need me right now, I don't exactly know what I would be for. Aww. That was really interesting. I can't tell. I it seemed genuine to yeah. me. Like it seemed like he really like yeah. had a moment. Well, Cuz like we've seen him walking around uh, on the roof and stuff and acting sus. It's the most emotion he's shown. Yeah. The entire season. He's obviously like de you know, dealing with I feel like he's telling the truth. But it's like you can't tell. Oh, did they did they just put that up? I wasn't there before. No, it was not. Just to protect him. I mean, there's cameras everywhere. Yeah. And they're watching him, you know? He's at odds with himself, the symbolism. Yeah. That was a great moment. I liked it a lot. Yeah, um, that was a really great moment. I mean, it just kind of gives you a little bit more insight into maybe what's going on. Because, like, we've kind of been picking up on that. Like, something's not right. Something is off with him ever since the beginning of this season. His behavior with the kleptomania and all that, that's kind of symptomatic of a deeper underlying issue, which is probably, like... I mean, I don't know anything about the psychology behind kle yeah. kleptomania. So if I were to speculate, I would say, you know, maybe it's just to feel like, you know, that, that you're alive. You know? Sure. I mean, there's a lot of ways to dissect it, you know, because if you look at him as someone who's tra kind of trapped in a cage. Yeah. It's like it, it's like you're trying to you're breaking the rules, you know. Yeah. Yeah. There's that to, as well. To kind of get out of that cage. It's very interesting. It's like what else? he doesn't really have any options. We haven't seen him interact with his his wife or kids at all that's true you know he's a very loyal subject at this point and he's very good at being that loyal subject and yeah the, the, the thing about it is it's like what what he revealed there is he's basically saying if he didn't have that he'd be dead yeah there'd be no purpose there'd yeah. be no point left yeah yeah that, that's essentially what he's driving at. yeah that's, and that's a scary place to be it's a oh, it's a real feeling man it's uh it was good the, the acting was really good. Yeah, really, really good. Like, just the way that the emotion in the room changed because initially Shiv's like, what? Like, okay, what's going on? And then she hugs him and then she realizes that her brother is breaking down and then like... Well, she was completely disarmed. Yeah. Yeah, she was prepared for a fight. <laughs> well, that, that would... I mean, that's what we were prepared for because historically that's what would have happened and that's yeah. what was happening in the panic room as well, you know, the whole time. As soon as Shiv came in the picture and Kendall started sensing competition, he started kind of showing us, you know, the old, more cutthroat Kendall, at least I thought, where uh, he was like, you know, really... I, Especially I, when he was in the room, like, uh, 22 billion, 22.5 billion. It, it was reminiscent of that episode. Was it the first episode where he was trying to buy that company, Volta? Yeah, but he was never cutthroat. 
I mean, he was driven to the point of being kind of cutthroat just because of the circumstance with that with that guy who owned the company. Walter, that, yeah. Walter, yeah. Like, that guy was a jerk. And he, so he was trying to make his dad happy by being an equivalent jerk. So maybe cutthroat is not the right word for it, but I, yeah, aggressive then. But he was never aggressive with Shiv or Roman. He was always... In, a, in his own weird way, kind of loving towards them. And the thing is, he's very protective of his turf because it's safe and he's alive. Do you it, gives think- him, it gives him his oxygen and it felt like someone was stepping in to take his oxygen from him. Okay, that's so why that's what was- you think it is? Because I thought that it was kind of also similar to how he and Roman were constantly in competition. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, so, that's a good co- Well, in this season, yeah. I thought that as soon as he felt that competition, then he kind of like woke up it a little activated bit. activated it, yeah. And was like, I got I to gotta step up, otherwise I'm not going to be dad's golden boy. But it seems that he really is his dad's golden boy right now because like you were saying uh, during the episode the only reason they were able to have that conversation with that lady was because Shiv was there and the relationship that she had with her so even though Shiv may not have really helped to it was indirect like close yeah uh, yeah it was indirect they would never have been able to have that conversation in that kind of way if Shiv hadn't been there well she broached it with her own sensibility like her own uh, well her sensibility about the culture yeah she was like or, or like she's like I just can't see it business wise and the lady was like no business wise it actually works and that disagreement is what in, is the impetus for the entire conversation right. which wouldn't have happened if Shiv never said anything if Shiv wasn't there that day that deal would have never been on the table right because she was completely yeah. like you know screw you that's the message from the family yeah. but because she knew Shiv and then they had a relationship outside of this that she was and they were able to kind of talk more comfortably yeah. and so like I, Shiv is Shiv is really important. Like she, she brings something to the table that's really valuable. She's smart. Well, you she, know? she was accidentally useful here. She just still deserves, in my opinion, some credit because, like, if it wasn't for that, nothing would have been happening. But I do think, like, you know, she comes with an an energy that is needed in sure. that company. Yeah, you know, I agree. So I don't think that Ken is being cutthroat with his family because he doesn't care about them. He's just trying to protect his oxygen tank is what I'm seeing this as off of that scene. Right, his reason for, yeah. for being right now. I understand how you got that because in the l- later part of season one, he kind of got inspired off of hearing from his older brother about how you know his dad basically put them in competition with each other, right? Yeah. I kind of looked at the same conclusion. It's like, okay, so that's, that's the environment that his dad fostered and that's continuing now. Mm-hmm. So it's just competition. I didn't realize until this moment, it's not competition at all. He's just trying to protect his his his, his, his corner. Well, I think it was competition, but now it's changed, you know, because... I, mm, I don't know. I think this was a revealing moment. It was a... Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not uh, taking away from that. I do think it was a revealing moment. It was yeah. a very... It was a very well done moment. Very yeah. well acted. Um, everything, yeah. you know, really good. Well, I love the acting in that scene so much. I, th- I thought it was so cool. Like, because she comes in and she's like, I'm not letting you out of this. Yeah. You have to say something. You have to give me something because there's something off and I just need to know, I give me something. He gave her the real, you know, what's yeah. going on inside with nothing specific other than there is pain. I can't tell for sure, but I would imagine there's at least a degree of guilt there for what happened. Because mm. someone's life was taken yeah. on account of him driving. What I was shown in season one was that he was really the only good dude, right? And sure. if, if that is true, then he has to feel awful. I, I mean, let's set aside the fact that he was a druggie and not like tending to his kids at the level he should be. He was really the only good dude. And so if, he, if there is good in his heart, he should be feeling guilty about the fact that someone's life was is no longer there because of him. Sure. You know, I thought all that was was profoundly interesting. And the dynamics, you know, you can, you get everybody's side. And Shiv is, you know who became more likable was his older brother. Um, I like Connor. Connor. I, I like, for the first time, I'm like, I actually appreciate him in this episode. Why? What, I don't know. It was just like, mind. because because that, that the, the sneaky the snake lady came in. Yeah. To the, it's like, this is a funeral. Why are you here? Like, hey, buzz off, you know? <laughs> that kind of offends me. It's like, I think some things are off limits. And she went in there looking for juice, looking, looking yeah. for something uh, a saucy. Tidbit, a yeah. tidbit, yeah. And it's like, that to me is so impolite. It's, 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 
unethical, you know? And, yeah. and so he's like, he looks at her, he goes, I see, and he, with a smile, he's like, I see you coming from a mile away. Yeah. And then he's like, just, you know. Say this she, one thing. This one thing. And he kept coming back to yeah. that. Like, he kept bringing it back. And then his woman saved his ass, even though it was kind of goofy. She's like, here, <laughs> say this. And it was the most generic statement possible. And he just read it with confidence and yeah. a smile. I liked I it. I love that. That was so, that was so funny. Yeah. That really, really tickled me. I mean, there were some really great moments in this as well. Like, I was quite quite disturbed at how Tom was treating Greg although that's no surprise really like their relationship is super toxic and I don't know why I'm not disturbed by that at all I just saw it as dudes being dudes like Tom is chucking bottles he didn't it's aim so to unprofessional you don't throw bottles at your freaking assistant that's not on I'm sorry no I don't think you know what show you're watching if you think it's unprofessional and that's the part that bothers you no okay no I do I realize what show I'm watching right like I but I can still feel the way that I feel, which sure. is like I'm horrified at this relationship. But it's like it's it's such a typical abusive relationship because at the end it's like, oh, everything's fine, right? Like Yeah, but they're like brothers. I mean, you yourself have rambled on about your, your the, the aggressive physical fights that you would have with your sister. You still love each other? No, we do. But I thought what was interesting... Just dismiss it and walk past no. it. No. <laughs> I'm trying to get to a point. My point being that I think that the reason why he is that way with Greg is because he's able to fully be himself. When he's with Shiv, he has to present like a certain version of himself, right? And then he has all this rage from like feeling like he's sidelined he's not even in the good panic room he's a bit of a joke you know and then all of a sudden his the person who is closest to him is like hey so i think i want to kind of like professionally break up with you yeah, and yeah. then he's like no not you and he yeah. can't handle it and so like all of that pent up rage and emotion is coming out because he has no other healthy outlet for it yeah that's no, that's what i, I thought I, I, no i think that's a very very accurate assessment of the situation but i think g going this deep into it i think he genuinely does like greg like he oh, genuinely he does. yeah it's like i think that greg for him is his younger brother you know and so looking at it in a very immature not immature what's the word i'm looking for adolescent kind of way yeah you know it's like him throwing water bottles is like i see that as no different than a 12 year old and a 10 year old having a fight you know it's like sure. if, if he really wanted to hurt him legitimately he would have thrown it at his head or grabbed him and like physically like done you know what i mean he would have no, no, physically yeah, yeah. he, no, he was right. he was deliberately doing something that was violent but knew it wasn't going to really hurt him you know and just like you would do with your younger brother it's like you're not really going to hurt them but you want to hurt them you want to make them scared you know why do you think Greg's got issues? <laughs> so, which, my Greg. Which Greg? <laughs> my, my Greg. You know, because Greg and I used to have fights like that all the time as kids. It was just like we yell at each other and get physical with each other, like we love each other. And so it's sure. You know. No, but I found it funny later on when he was trying to do like the nice blackmail thing that like cracked me up so much because it was just kind of really unusual. Ab yeah, yeah, it was absurd and unusual. And then like Tom was really enjoying enjoying it for yeah. whatever reason and then like at the end he's proud of how slimy he is yeah <laughs> and then he's like gives him a promotion and like greg's little face i just really enjoy greg because there's this like innocence and weird purity about him even when he's doing something like attempting to blackmail tom and then tom's like i'm gonna give you more money and he's like really you know, it's just yeah like, it, was, it was nicely done so funny no that was one of the best scenes in the entire show yeah i really enjoyed this episode overall I, the, in particular that like all the stuff with tom i really enjoyed like i like how when he was screaming as he was throwing the water bottles in the middle of him saying off it cut and it was like <laughs> one of the best cuts in the entire show because it left you at the at the extreme peak the the, the like the most climax oh it, at the most climactic apex of, of the emotions yeah and it just dipped out for a second like you knew what was going on yeah you, you know what i mean i i thoroughly enjoyed that anyway thoroughly enjoyed this episode hopefully you guys did too thanks so much for hanging out i'm jabby koi this is achara cook peace out